Great. So happy Friday, everyone. My name is Val Walters, and I'm the executive director of the Ryan Bartel Foundation. Um, lots of new friends joining us um, this kind of gloomy Friday afternoon. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about the foundation, and then I will turn over the presentation to Lacey. Um, the Ryan Bartel Foundation is a um, youth nonprofit working in Loudoun County, and our um, goal is to build that resiliency muscle. I really like that term. Um, teach kids resiliency skills so that they never have to turn to suicide as an option. So we know that our young people, our, our teenagers are still growing that frontal cortex and they are, you know, impulsive. So um, ups and downs in life are going to happen to them, not only as teenagers, but as adults. So if we can build those resiliency skills so that they know how to navigate those inevitable ups and downs, um, the better off they'll be. So today's um, program is about that, but also um, all of our teen programs, and I'll put some links in the chat as we continue on, are really about doing that for teens. Um, both our middle school and high school teens, we've got lots of different programs that they can participate in both in-person and virtual. So if you're not in the area and if a virtual program better meets your needs, we can um, get you connected with one of those programs as well. So um, without a whole lot of further um, program information, I'm gonna turn it over to um, our program director, Lacey, who's gonna do a, an amazing presentation on what it takes to, to raise a resilient teen. Thank you so much, Val. And uh, thank you so much for, for having me and for being here, everyone. Um, I am just thrilled. Um, May, as y'all as y'all may know, is Mental Health Awareness Month, and uh, we're just so excited to have this important conversation about resilience. Um, it is a, a critical topic when we think about mental wellness with teens. So I'm going to just jump right into our presentation. I'm so, so excited to have all of you. I want to talk about our topics for today's uh, today's webinar. We're going to do some introductions. So I want to tell you a little bit more about me and uh, kind of what I'm bringing to to the webinar today. And then I'm excited to get to know each one of you as well. We'll have a couple opportunities for you to share in chat. Um, we're also going to do a little icebreaker activity, a who's in our Zoom room, to build some connections and find out who's here, some of the things that we might have in common. And then we're going to dive right into our topic, uh, an overview of resilience. What is it? What does the research say? And what are those critical factors that really uh, increase resilience for teens? That's what we're going to be focused on. And then, of course, um, what I'm imagining many of you came for, what are those practical strategies that you can use to promote resilience? We're going to spend some time talking through each of these um, and actually thinking through and even having a little practice with what these might look like, what they might sound like, so that you can leave here today feeling like you have some, uh, some tools in your toolbox to go home and use with the young people in your life. And we will conclude with some questions, um, resources that we'll be sharing um, along the way. If you do have questions, feel free to drop those into chat, um, and we will do our best to get answers to those questions um, at the end of today's webinar. So with that, I want to dive right in, share a little bit more about myself. Um, and while I am doing that, I want to invite you to introduce yourself in chat. So if you want to share name, location, um, maybe why, why you're so interested in uh, joining our webinar today. I wanted to just share a little bit more about me. Um, so I am the program director for the Ryan Bartell Foundation. I am also a psychologist, and I've spent much of my career working with young people in schools as well as community-based mental health organizations. Um, I've also led several national mental health initiatives, uh, one for the American Psychological Association, another for the National Council for Mental Wellbeing, Mental Health First Aid USA, uh, led the team that created Team Mental Health First Aid. This was in partnership with Lady Gaga's Born This Way Foundation. You might see a picture of her if you recognize Lady Gaga. She met with uh, many of the teens that were part of that program which was really, really exciting. Um, I'm a mom of two as well. You can see a few pictures of my of, of my kiddos here. Um, and that, that's important because, um, you know, resilience is truly something that um, I think is, is one of the greatest gifts that we can instill in our children. Specifically related to resilience, um, I have I've done a number of um, research studies related to resilience. I would say that's one of my kind of passion areas. Um, I have looked at the factors that 
contribute to resilience in young people who've experienced trauma um, as, uh, as some of the research that I've done. So very excited, excited to, to share um, some of my experience and knowledge and uh, appreciate those of you who, uh, who are saying hello in chat. Um, we're gonna make this, um, this Zoom webinar as interactive as we can. I know it's a Friday and so we're gonna try to, try to have some fun and definitely wanna, wanna get to know all of you. So with that, um, as a little as a little warm up, um, want to uh, invite you to join me um, in a, a little a little activity. This is a uh, cameras on if, all right. And I'm gonna have a number of statements that pop up on the screen, and I invite you if this applies to you to turn your camera on, all right? Um, and I totally get if you're, um, you know, if you're eating during lunchtime or any of that, that's fine. This is a safe space. Um, you could also do a thumbs up um, if that applies to you, a reaction button. We have lots of great tools that we can use in our Zoom webinar, but I would love to see your faces. It would be great. So um, as, I, uh, as I do these statements, I encourage you to, to turn your, your cameras on. All right, is everyone ready? Okay, here we go. So I am a parent caregiver to a middle or high school student. Love to see who this applies to. If you wanna turn your camera on, I see some thumbs up. Hello, hello, wonderful, wonderful. And all right, if you wanna turn your cameras back off, we're gonna do uh, we're gonna do a few more rounds of this. All right, get get a little comfort to show in our showing our zoom faces awesome and i see some people in chat that's great too any way that you want to any way that you want to participate all right i have participated in the ryan bartell foundation parent panel before who has been to one of our parent panels before i'm going to turn your camera on or give me a thumbs up or reaction button all right yeah, I see. Uh, wonderful, wonderful. I see. Uh, see, we've got a few folks who've been here before. We always love to love to have um, you know uh, parents that are returning, and um, this is something that we've been doing. Um, as Val mentioned, we've done a number of these, and we do record them. We have a full library on our Ryan Bartell Foundation page. There's a number of mental wellness topics, and we always engage experts to discuss these topics. So if there's something that you're curious about, want to go back, I encourage you to check out our library. All right, let's do one more here. All right, so this is my first time attending the parent panel. Let's see who this is that your first time. I'm gonna show your face and or your give a reaction button. All right, thanks, Jana. And I see uh, Jason, Holly, Kara, Tomoko is here. Awesome, well, welcome. We are so happy to have you here for the first time and really, really eager to to learn and engage. Okay, I've got a couple more here. I'm gonna keep keep going. All right, so let's see if this applies to, to any of you um, here with us today. I worry about the mental health of my child or another child in my life. And I am definitely would be putting, putting, my, uh, putting my camera on here, right? This is, and I see so many thumbs up. Yes. Right. This is so, so important right now. Um, you know, we know as parents, caregivers, how important this is and and why we're so, so happy that you're here engaging in this conversation. All right. I've got two more. Everyone's doing doing great. Getting comfort, comfortable in our Zoom room here. All right. Let's try this one. Resilience is a new concept to me. Is there anyone who's coming in feeling like and this is a safe space to admit that? Um, you know, maybe it's something you've heard of. It is, certainly has been a, a buzzword. Um, and maybe you're kind of wondering, like, I just don't really fully understand it. Is that is that new new concept for some of you? All right, so I'm not seeing too many. Uh, so maybe, maybe we'll move to our next one, which is you maybe know a little bit about resilience, but you really want more practical strategies to help your child develop resilience. Yeah, chances are I see lots of thumbs up. Some people coming on camera. It's why we're here, um, and really what we're what we're all about um, and wanting to to talk through today. So thank you so much. Thank you for for participating and kind of getting warmed up here. Um, as we go through, I'm going to make this as interactive as we possibly can. Um, and so we'll have options to to use our reaction buttons, to use chat, to to come on camera. We'll make it a, a little more fun and interactive, especially on this Friday afternoon. All right, so let's let's jump right in. Um, Want to start talking through, um, you know, everything that um, that we are going to discuss related to resilience. So, 
psychologists, you know, other um, researchers have really been looking at this concept of resilience um, for a number of decades, because this is something that all humans really can benefit from. And of course, parents and educators have been especially interested um, in understanding, you know, why is it that some young people, um, when faced with challenges, are able to kind of get through it? You know, what what special qualities do they have, and what does that look like, and how can we really make sure it's applied to everyone? So, starting from the kind of this foundational concept of what is resilience. At its most foundational level, resilience is an individual's ability to bounce back from challenging experiences, right? I think this kind of makes sense. I love the visual of, you know, actually kind of bouncing back. Um, but it's it's a little bit more than that. It's it's the processing, um, it's the process of struggling well, um, and the outcome of successfully getting through difficult life experiences. I love this idea of struggling well, as it suggests that we all face difficult situations. We all face difficult, you know, emotions at times, right? That's, that is part of, of being human. And uh, this idea that, you know, we're not always happy all the time. Things aren't always going to go our way. We're going to face difficult life situations. Um, and that's true. That's true for all of us as humans, but especially for our young people, right? They're facing a whole variety of challenges, learning to deal with some of those difficult emotions. And so giving them, equipping them with those coping strategies to be able to identify their emotions and to, and to have those tools to be able to cope when things don't go their way um, is really, really critical. And equally important is this idea that we don't have to do this alone either, right? Sometimes we have had this belief that um, that it's just on us, that it's on us to, to be resilient and to bounce back. Um, and so I think it's important to realize that it is also about accessing resources um, from the community, from our school system, and especially from our parents and caregivers, which is why it's so great that you're all here having this conversation, because we want to equip our young people in understanding the resources that are available to them, as well as the, that ability to ask for help, right? How important it is to be able to know that it's okay to not be okay and to ask for help. And we wanna help our young people be able to do that and to be aware of those resources. Um, this is critical for us at the Ryan Bartell Foundation to really provide some of those resources to young people and to families. Again, why I'm so excited that you're all here. So the number one question I'd say I get asked when I'm doing a presentation like this um, and, you know, as I'm talking about resilience, are kids born resilient or is it something that can be taught, right? And that might be something that you're all wondering about. Um, Dr. Ann Mastin is one of the um, kind of leading researchers on resilience. She's based out of the University of Minnesota um, and she has this, she's really famous for saying, Children have natural resilience that is nurtured through ordinary magic, meaning, yes, most children are born resilient and it can be learned. It can be practiced. It can be developed as our kids grow. Um, and I love to, to think about resilience as a muscle. Um, Val alluded to this um, in her opening remarks because it really is, it's, it's like a muscle, but kids need to be able to practice, to use it, to strengthen it, just like they would anything else, right? We're gonna get tutoring um, if, our, you know, if, if, if our child is struggling with reading, um, we're gonna encourage them to practice uh, basketball if they wanna make the basketball team. We need to give our young people opportunities to actually build those resiliency muscles. Um, and so we'll talk about what that looks like, what that really means um, when we get to the strategies. But I think it's a really, really helpful concept. Another visual I love to think about is kind of thinking about um, this idea of a tree. Um, and as a, a point of connection, my husband is an arborist a tree doctor, as we call him in our house. Um, and so he's taught me a whole lot about, about trees, um, maybe more than I ever wanted to know. Um, and as a psychologist, I've taught him a whole lot about humans, right? So we're, the, we're, a, we're a good mix. Um, but something he has taught me about, about trees, um, and I think it's, just, it's so applicable to our conversation, is that to withstand the resistance of a strong wind, a storm, 
a tree needs really wide roots to be able to prevent that tree from being toppled over, right? That's a beautiful visual when we think about applying this to our kids, right? They need those deep roots, right? And that's often being grounded by us as parents, caregivers, community educators, those systems of support so that they can come back to their core um, and really feel like they have that sense of purpose and belonging and love, um, which uh, can allow them to, to try new experiences and face difficult situations. Something else really interesting about trees that I've learned that I'll, I'll share with you, when uh, faced with repeated environmental stress, so uh, storms, wind, trees actually grow something that's called reaction wood. I, I don't know if anyone knew this. This, is, this was very new to me, but it gives them extra strength. So it's essentially kind of at their, at their core um, in their trunk, and it gives them extra strength to be able to withstand those, those stressful situations, right? To stay upright and adapt well. Again, beautiful image of those resiliency muscles that we're helping our children develop because it really helps them to be able to stay strong and to continue to grow into, uh, into, young, adult, in, into young adulthood. So love that visual and wanted to share it with you. So why is resilience, why is resilience so important? I, I doubt I have to convince this group, right? You're taking time out of your busy Friday um, that this is such an important topic, um, but just to make sure that we're all kind of on the, on the same page and kind of the same foundation, thinking about the challenges that our teens face today, right? There's so many, and you may add to this list, right? Thinking about the, the young people in your life, you know, they're exploring identity, figuring out who they are, navigating those, those peer relationships, all of this with the influence of technology and social media, right? And we're still trying to grapple and understand with some of the impacts that that's having on the lives of our young people and their connections, school, the pressures of school. And we know that some of our young people have even bigger challenges, right? Loss of loved ones, uh, facing financial insecurity, threats of violence, traumatic events that they've experienced, right? All of this um, is on the shoulders of, of so many of our young people. And this has resulted, and we, we, we can see through research, through data, there's higher rates of stress and mental health challenges like depression and anxiety compared to even a decade ago. And so this is a trend that you know, we're really concerned about and we really want to be paying attention to. And again, I know many of you are, are really tuned into this. I'm worried about this with your own, own children. And unfortunately, we've also seen an increase in youth suicide. Um, youth suicide is, is the second leading cause of death for this age group, um, 10 to 24. And while this, these are national trends, this is national data, we know that this is true for the state of Virginia and specifically for Loudoun County, where I know so many of you are, are coming and, and joining us from. So this is some data um, that was, um, was provided by the um, 2022 Advisory Commission on Youth's Annual YouthNet Survey of Loudoun County Teens. And young people reported that more than six had, ex excuse me, more than six in 10 had experienced anxiety. Right. It's really um, a really high number. Nearly four in 10 experienced depression. And over one in 10 teens in Loudoun County reported experiencing suicidal thoughts. Now, these are the young people that we we love and we care about. Right. These are our um, our neighbors and, and, you know, our own children and something that we are we are so concerned about, which is why we're so glad that you're here talking about ways that we can be better supporting our young people. Now, resilience comes into play because it can help offset some of these challenges, really as a protective factor from some of these mental health challenges. It can help increase coping, coping skills that are associated with some of these risks, such as being bullied or having a traumatic experience. I love this visual um, as it kind of is balancing out, right? When there's some of those challenges, resilience is coming in um, to really help increase the chances that that young person is able to, uh, able to cope and able to have improved mental wellness. And through research, um, we, we recognize that resilience is a protective factor against suicidal thoughts and behavior, which is why this conversation is all the more important to us at the Ryan Bartell Foundation, really central to our work and mission. And again, why we're so glad that you're here having this conversation as parents and caregivers. 
So what are those factors? What are those factors that contribute to resilience, right? I hopefully we, we're all on the same page. This is important. Um, what can we be doing to really increase the resilience of our young people? So the really, really good news I have for all of you, especially here on this parent panel, is that the number one factor, the number one factor that contributes to resilience in a young person is having a supportive parent or caregiver in the life of a young person, right? Isn't that lovely? I hope that that um, kind of brings a smile to your face. You're all here, um, how important that is. And research shows the more supportive adults, the more trusted adults that are in the lives of young people, the more likely that they're able to be resilient, able to really develop those coping strategies. So this is huge. And again, um, just emphasizes the importance of your role. But there's a number of other factors um, that, that play um, into to creating a resilient young person. Um, and I'm gonna just detail these a, a little bit and then we'll talk through what, those practical strategies of how we can really um, increase these, these key factors. So building a sense of self-efficacy, perceived control, over life, over decisions, right? And we want this to be, of course, developmentally appropriate, um, you know, giving um, giving our young people a sense of, of making some of those decisions and choosing, um, you know, things in their life that they wanna be doing. A growth mindset, we're gonna talk about this one, right? This is also kind of a, a popular buzzword right now, but it's super important. Uh, instilling in our young people this idea that um, they can try new things and, and they can learn new things, right? Really important, uh, really important idea. Strengthening coping, coping skills and emotional identification, you know, being able to recognize and name those feelings is a really important, uh, really important skill and something that often needs practice and, and support. And then having an, the ability to regulate those emotions, right? It's okay to feel really angry, to feel really upset, but what are we going to do with that? What are we going to do with that so we're not harming ourselves or others um, in, as we try to process through those emotions? And finally, being able to identify identify and use strengths. This is a really, um, again, important factor. And we'll talk about some ways that we can do this as parents and caregivers. So I do want to jump right in because I know this is why so many of you said that you're here to talk through these, these strategies. So we have five strategies that I'm going to um, talk through. These are all grounded in research. These are evidence-based strategies. And they're hopefully very practical things that you can really um, use and apply at home. Um, for some of you, maybe you're already doing some of these things and this will kind of validate um, some of those strategies that you've already been using. Um, and hopefully you maybe learn one or two new things that you might wanna try. Um, we're gonna do kind of a double click, a deep dive into each of these next. Um, and there's gonna be an opportunity to also practice and to have a little more engagement. I know I have been talking at you a lot and I'd love to, to give it you a few opportunities to, to practice and think about how you might apply these in your in the lives of your, your students. So the first one is all about modeling resilience, all right? Um, so this is very much um, about you as, a, you as a parent, right? You know, believe it or not, even though it may not always feel like it, you truly are as a parent, you have the most influence over your child, over their attitude, their, their beliefs, their behaviors, um, and they're always watching. You know, even when we don't think they are, they're watching, they're listening. So it's really important to think about how you model resilience yourself. Now, this you don't have to be perfect. And in fact, that's actually kind of the whole point is that we're not perfect. You know, we're all human. We make mistakes. Things happen. We go through tough times. We face difficult emotions as adults. And you want to let your teen see that you know, see that a little bit, understand that, you know, life isn't always perfect for you. Um, and it's, this is not about sharing every detail, right? You've had a rough day at work. You don't need to come home and, and vent, you know, all and all share all those details with your child, but letting them know that you had a tough day is okay. Um, sometimes we, we want to be so strong and kind of hide that from our children. And it's okay to let them know that sometimes we're having a tough time. Um, when we do that, we want to use coping skills and we want to show and model how we ourselves manage stress and get through some difficult times. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about kind of what that looks like. And really important is to actually share what you learned or what you might do differently next time. This is all about that growth mindset, modeling it yourself. You know, gosh, I kind of, I kind of struggled. Um, and I, something I'm going to do differently next time is, is this being open and vulnerable um, is huge, especially for, for middle and high school students to see that. 
being a good model also means caring for yourself. Self-care is huge. We're going to actually talk about that in our fifth strategy because it's so important. Setting boundaries, right? Setting boundaries for our time, uh, for our space is, is really important. And then being able to ask for help. How often do we as parents, caregivers actually ask for help when we need it? And it's so important that we model that that's something that we can do too. Because when our teens see us doing that, it sends that message, it's okay. It really is okay for them to ask for help too. So I always like to actually have an idea of like what this might sound like, what this might look like. Um, this is gonna be a little bit more in my own words. And so I invite you to maybe think about how you would put this in, in your own words, but, kind of how we might model resilience and even just kind of share um, with our, you know, with our teens that we've had a rough day. So for me, it might sound like, you know, gosh, I had a really busy day at work, feeling a little stressed right now about a project I'm working on. Listen, can you give me a few minutes? I just need to catch my breath, make a to-do list for tomorrow. That always kind of helps me clear my mind and get focused. And then, you know what, I'd love to make some dinner together, maybe bake some cookies, watch our favorite show, you know, cooking, spending time with you always helps me relax and feel better, right? I've shared, I've shared a little bit. I haven't given all of the, all of the stressful details of my work project and coworkers this and, um, you know, my boss that, but I've let them know that I had a tough day and, and that's okay. Um, and it's also important that we model and think about some of those those coping strategies. How do we reduce stress ourselves? Because that's a that's a huge piece. So thinking about this would love, um, you know, for you to consider what are your some of your go to stress relievers? And if you'd want to share and chat, I think it's always, always lovely to, to get some new ideas for stress relievers. Um, and there's no right or wrong answer to this either. Um, you know, it can it can look really different um, for all of us in terms of what what relieves stress. Um, and you're welcome to type in chat. You're also welcome if you'd like to unmute and actually share one of your stress relievers. Would love that. Oh, Holly, thank you. I see I'm going for a walk. Love that, right? Little movement, maybe getting out in nature can be so uh, so helpful. Jana, walking usually with usually with your uh, dogs. Thanks for sharing. Anyone else? Jason, breathing. Yes, yeah, right. Just taking that time, um, having you know some some mindful moments. Appreciate that. These are great. Anyone else? And feel free to to type in chat or uh, unmute. Oh, Holly, I love this. Something I like to do with my kiddo, sing, dance, be silly. Like that is, that is, I so appreciate you sharing that because I, um, I like to do that a lot in my house too. And, and it's, it, yeah, another like sense of just of having fun and also relieving stress. Genevieve, um, exercise. Yeah, it's a great one. It's a really great one. Uh, Jana, one kid likes to swing and one likes to listen to music. Nice. Nice. Thank you. All right, excellent. Well, appreciate you all sharing, and uh, yeah, continue. I invite you to continue to share any of your any of your go-to stress relievers, and then thinking about how we we model those um, for our teens. All right, let's let's move to our next strategy here: compassionate communication. All right, this is a, a really important one, and want to just kind of kind of walk you through what this one is all about. So. Not only is it really important that you as parents, caregivers are modeling resilience and kind of demonstrating how you handle difficult situations, your kids are also looking at how you respond when they go through difficult situations, okay? So I'm gonna frame this in kind of a, a, an invitation of things to do and then maybe uh, some recommendations of things not to do. Sometimes that can be, that can be a helpful way of, of thinking through some strategies. So. In terms of do, I want to really empathize when your teen struggles, right? Really try to put ourselves in their shoes, understand what they're going through. I want to try to invite your child to share their feelings in a safe space. Now, I get sometimes, right, we're, we're doing this and it's like they're not, they're not ready to talk. They're not ready to share, maybe kind of shutting down, offering that invitation. I'm here. I'm here when you're ready to talk. I can tell that, you know, something's bothering you. I, come find me. You know, I, I am always here to listen. And then when they're ready to share, and sometimes you can't always predict when they're ready to share, right? Maybe it's the car ride. Maybe it's like right before bed when you yourself are just ready to, ready to, ready to go to sleep. And they've decided that that's the time that they're going to share. Do your best to remove distractions, 
really tune in, listen without judgment. I know this can be hard too sometimes, but really, um, again, trying to put yourself in their shoes and understand what it is that they're going through. You don't have to have the perfect thing to say. You don't have to have the perfect way to respond. Simply being there, telling them that that you that you care is is huge. And your young people in your life, your kids, it really, really makes a huge difference. And then asking if there's anything you can do to help. Now, maybe there's nothing. Maybe they just need some time. Sometimes it's just a matter of, the, of someone just listening and validating that what they're going through is tough. Sometimes that alone is enough, but there might be something and you can ask and maybe there's something that your, you know, your child suggests um, can be really helpful. Now, on the opposite side, what are some some things that we might want to avoid and maybe not want to do um, when we're trying to have a, a great conversation with our with our child? So we're not going to want to minimize situations when your child is struggling. This can be tough, right? Because sometimes it's like oh my gosh, what do you possibly have to be stressed about? I'm the one paying the mortgage and worrying about getting groceries and putting food on the table every single night. But we got to get out of that mind, mindset, right? And really connect on a deeper level that, you know, these are these are real stresses and challenges that, are, that our teens are going through. Um, and we don't want to minimize those. This one's tough as well. We're going to try not to fix it. I know for me, sometimes that is like my first go-to. I mean, with my kids, with, with my husband, it's like, oh, what can we do? How can I fix this? Sometimes you got to like take a breath and it might just be a matter of listening, listening, validating, not necessarily giving advice unless your teen is asking for it. Again, you know, asking if there's anything you can do to help. And then another another invitation of things to to avoid starting every response with that, every response with that, well, when I was your age, right? Um, this, we want to relate, right? And sometimes this feels like maybe the best way we we, we can relate. But uh, I, I have a coworker that um, loves to say this kind of expression, and I think it's so helpful. Um, this idea that we have all been teenagers. Yes, right? We all live in the year 2024. But we have not been teenagers in the year 2024, okay? And I, that always kind of gets me back into this this place of, yes, right? This is this is new, and the experiences our teens are facing in the year 2024 might be very, very different um, from when we were in in high school. And for some of us, it might be a little longer than others, right? That that doesn't matter. The point being, we want to really connect with what our 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 teens are going through now in this moment. So I want to think about how we might respond to this situation. Um, and some of you may, maybe have had a situation like this. So maybe you can give us some kind of some some experience. Um, imagine your your teen comes home from school and they're really visibly upset, you know, and eventually right after you've, you've created create this open space, um, they tell you that their friends were hanging out over the weekend and they know because they saw some of the pictures um, on social media and your teen didn't get invited. What might you say? What might you do? Um, invite you to kind of take a take a few seconds and just think about maybe write down um, what you might say to empathize with your teen. And if you would like, invite you to share some sample language in chat. Um, this can be really helpful for us all to have kind of more more language in our toolbox. So when we're faced with a situation, we can think about how we can we can kind of start that conversation and how we can really lead with lead with some empathy, some connection. Would anyone like to share? And you could also unmute and share. I'd love to love to hear hear some voices too. Genevieve, thank you. You know that can hurt your feelings when you feel left out. That's great. Just acknowledging, right? That and and we might kind of tap into a time where we also felt excluded. Um, that can really that can really hurt when you feel left out. And just acknowledging acknowledging that, validating that. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Anyone else? How how you might kind of put this in your own words? And you're welcome to to type in chat or unmute and share.
All right. Well, I know you might might still be thinking about it, and and certainly welcome some 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 text in in chat as we go through. Um, Jana, thank you. I see you sharing that this is actually something that happened recently, um, and sounds like you said something like that might feel bad, and then you asked how they were feeling. Yeah, yeah. Again, validating that that that's really tough. I mean, that's, that's huge, right? Not trying to dismiss and, and, and spin it in a positive way. Like, Oh, okay. But you have other friends or it's not that big of a deal, right? Minimizing. It's like, that's, that's really hard. I'm so sorry that that happened. Um, you know, I think that that's kind of some of the language that, that I might recommend, um, you know, gosh, that's so tough. It's so tough to feel excluded. You know, I'm here for you. Is there anything that, is there anything I could do that might make you feel better right now? Maybe there's nothing, right? Maybe they just need to kind of like sulk and and have some time, um, and that's okay too. We're not going to try to force like, oh come on, cheer up, let's go, you know, let's go, let's go focus on something else. Because sometimes uh, we, as adults too, just need need a minute, need a minute to maybe feel sad or um, to kind of get those 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 feelings processed. Yeah, appreciate that. Holly, um, yeah, great, great, great comment here. I struggle with not assigning feeling for my kiddo. Yeah, um, in, in these situations, Jan is agreeing. Yeah, because I mean, you might want to check in too before we're kind of putting feeling words on the situation. Like, how, how are you feeling about that? Maybe they're fine. Maybe it's like, gosh, you know what? That's fine. I had other stuff going on. You know, I was I was busy doing, you know, doing my other activities. It's not that big of a deal. Um, or maybe in that check-in, right? They're they they're mad. Maybe you're kind of thinking that they're sad, and in fact, they're like really angry about it. So I think that's a, a really important point. Um, that it may not be how we would interpret those feelings, and so checking in. Yeah. Thank you. Great, great comments. I can tell we got some. Some uh, some parents, some caregivers that are really really tuned in to these conversations and appreciate all of your all of your perspectives. All right, let's move on to uh, move on to our third strategy here. Um, this one's all about identifying and activating strength. So, um, Sources of Strength is a is an evidence based suicide prevention program. Um, it's a national program. Um, it's also a model that's used by Loudoun County Public Schools to help young people uh, learn about and identify their own strengths. Um, and I think it can be really helpful to learn a little bit more, um, so you have some common language to use with your teens, um, especially if this is a, a program. And, and for those of you who are joining us um, from Loudoun County, um, that you could kind of connect with your um, your teens about uh, some of the language related to strength. So this is um, this is a, a visual from the Sources of Strength training. It's the it's the strengths wheel, um, and you can see some of the strengths that are um, listed on here. And and I'll just kind of review this review this briefly. Um, you know, this idea of family support. We've talked already about just how important that really is. Um, positive friends, positive friends, thinking about those healthy relationships and what that looks like. Mentors um, are huge, um, and again, really important as we think about those other trusted adults that are in um, the lives of our our teens. Healthy activities can be a whole lot. Of things, right? And really um, thinking about what um, what our teen is really into it doesn't have to be a a, a, you know, a formal sponsored you know sports event or extracurricular. It could be some other activities that they enjoy and finding out what their interests are. It's really important. Generosity um, is a is a huge one. You know, thinking about giving back and, you know, really giving um, our teens opportunities to, to do that in big and small ways within our family, within the larger community and school. Spirituality is on here, and, and this doesn't just mean religion, right? This is about um, finding that sense of belonging, sense of purpose, whether that is taking a walk in nature, uh, spending time with a, a favorite pet animal, um, or, you know, finding a kind of a mindfulness, even meditation, breathing practice that can really kind of ground us. There's many, many examples of what spirituality might look like for each of us. And then physical and, uh, and, and mental health as well. Um, so important that we're kind of tapping into, into those pieces. So this is a model that wanted to share um, and just kind of invite you to even think about your own strengths that, that you might tap into during difficult times, as well as the strengths that, um, you know, that you think that your child really um, has a lot of, or maybe some areas where it's like, gosh, I might want to, I want to spend some time, you know, thinking about this healthy activities um, piece, for example, and summer's coming up and what are we going to really do? 
Um, so, so that's, that's really, really important. Holly, I see a question in chat and I appreciate this, um, asking, can you speak to how to encourage, activate these strengths for perfectionist kids? It's a really good question. And um, it's actually almost a perfect segue to the very next strategy. Um, so I'm going to talk through that and then we'll see if that kind of answers your question. And if not, happy to, happy to return and um, revisit that because I know we, we um, likely have a lot of, you know, a lot of parents here with some really high achieving kids and kind of thinking about um, what it what it looks like to really support them. So I'm gonna move um, move into this this next strategy, which is all about embracing imperfection. All right, this is a tough one. I want to just like take a deep breath, invite you to take a deep breath um, because, but it's so important. Letting your team know that we're all human and we make mistakes and bad decisions. Okay. Now this is tough and this can be hard to think about. It can be hard to watch as a parent, right? But recognizing that mistakes are part of life and we have to help our teens think about coping and problem solving, right? And sometimes it's, it's some natural consequences, right? If we, if we don't study for that, um, you know, that, that AP exam, we, and we might not we might not get the score that we want if we're not practicing our free throws we might not make the the basketball team right and in others and other kids situations right it, it can be really tough to to watch um for teens to develop a growth mindset and we talked a little bit about this and i'll just uh quickly kind of review to make sure that we we're all on the same page growth mindset um is is this work that um is from Carolyn Dweck, a psychologist, fantastic book um, that, um, that she has that describes this in greater detail. Um, but this idea that there are always opportunities to, to grow, to learn new things. When we get feedback, it's constructive and it can help us. Um, and if we try something and we don't, we're not great at it, it's okay. We can learn from that. Um, failure is an opportunity to grow versus this idea of a fixed mindset where it's like, if I'm not good at it, I'm going to give up. Or I'm, I'm frustrated if I can't do something perfectly the first time. I don't want to, I don't want to be challenged. Um, feedback feels really personal and, and it's, it's like an attack. I'm going to stick to what I know, what I'm good at. And so for our teens to develop a growth mindset, which is really critical for resilience, they actually need our, need their parents to be able to say the words of, listen, it's okay to make mistakes challenges or opportunities to learn and grow. And listen, I love you for who you are, not what you do or achieve. Now, many of you are maybe thinking like, I, of course I believe these things, you know, absolutely. It's okay to make mistakes, but I invite you to think about if you've really said those words, if you said those words to your child, really explain you know, really explicitly said those very things, right? That it is okay to make mistakes. And I, no matter what, will love and support you. It is okay if you don't get perfect grades all of the time. Yes, it's important to us as a family, but it is okay if you've got a, a B on this on this test, right? Um, so I wanna just invite you to, to take a moment, maybe write a quick note, send a text, email, maybe maybe save it until they're out of school today um, and, and say that, you know, find a way to actually express this idea of, you know, telling them how much they matter to you and that you love them no matter what they do or what they are going to achieve. Really important. Give you all just a, a little bit of time to do this or, you know, maybe to, maybe take a note um, to, to do this later and check in with your with your team. All right. Make sure we have time for our our last strategy here, um, which is all about self care. And um, this is really that idea that as parents we have to put our own oxygen mask on first, right? So often um, we might be just rushing around, doing all of the things, making sure that you know all of those end of the school year. Um, tasks are taken care of and, and really supporting the whole family. At the end of the day, we really got to make sure that we're prioritizing our own self-care. Now, this can look different. It can look different on a daily basis. Um, it's kind of important that we check in with ourselves and think about what those activities are that are really going to support um, whether we need an energizer, uh, a stress reliever, uh, you know, maybe a maybe connection. Maybe we're just really missing some connection with um, some, some supportive people in our life. Um, and by 
tapping into our own self-care and our own self-care practices, we really model that for our teens. So kind of taking this full circle um, to the very first strategy of how we model resilience, really important. And maybe there's some things that we can do with our with our team together. Um, so we have a little um, a little self-care menu um, that I'm going to share on my screen. And I'm actually going to drop a, a copy into our chat. And this is a fillable PDF. Um, so something that I invite you to save and maybe revisit, maybe come up with some of the some of the self-care practices that you can really, um, really enjoy and some things that you might want to think about doing with your with your child as well. All right. So I'm going to give me just a minute while I uh, Drop that into chat. All right. And all right. And you know what? It is actually not letting me um, drop this file from my computer like I expected. Um, so we might follow up with all of you if that's okay. We're going to we'll typically send out an email afterwards um, and we'll include this. Um, it's a handout and it's got a number of our resources as well. So we'll go ahead and include that. In, uh, in in that follow-up, okay? But certainly invite you right now if you even want to um, drop maybe a, a self-care idea in chat if you have a favorite favorite self-care um, practice. All right, and I see, I see a couple people sharing already um, going swimming together, how lovely. Thinking about summer, um, what a fun, what a, a fun self-care self -care practice and definitely something that you can do as a family. Anyone else? Feel free to drop in chat. All right. Well, I appreciate you. Um, appreciate you sharing. Oh, Genevieve, thank you. Just spending time together, right? It doesn't have to be. Doesn't have to be overly complicated. Not rushing around. Yeah. Yeah. Just having a having a some time at home, or you know, going for a walk can be really, really. Really, really helpful. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you all. All right. Well, I want to um, move us to kind of our kind of our concluding remarks here, um, and then we're gonna um, take a take a little opportunity to do a poll. Um, so we hope that you'll stick around. Um, we want to get some feedback from all of you, and then I'm gonna share some share some resources um, with you, and then we can um, have some time for questions. So just as we wrap up this conversation, I want to just uh, invite you um, to, to um, recognize that resilience is very much a journey um, and, it, and it, there's no right or wrong place to start. Maybe some of you are, as you've, as you've talked about these strategies, it's like, wow, I'm really doing a lot of these things. Maybe for some of you, this is really new and there's no wrong time to start um, some of these practices um, with your child. Um, do know that resilience looks really different in each, in each teen. Um, and just because your teen is resilient, it does not mean that they're not going to feel stress sometimes, right? We can't prevent that. Um, it doesn't mean that they're not, that they might not feel anxious. Um, that's, that's, it's natural, right? It's na natural to feel anxious before a, before a big test. It's natural to feel anxious before a, a big performance, right? We can't take that away necessarily. Um, and they might have times where they're not and that's okay too, right? That's, that is part of being human. So part of that comes with the acceptance. But what it does mean, being resilient, is that you have the skills, you have the strategies to be able to cope when you're facing those difficult times and those difficult emotions. Now, if your teen is feeling really stuck or really overwhelmed, um, maybe unable to cope, then that might be the time to consider having them talk to someone Maybe a school counselor could be a great starting place. Um, maybe your pediatrician or primary care doctor um, or a, a, another mental health professional, psychologist, counselor, social worker. Um, the Ryan Bartell Foundation has a number of mental health professionals that we work with and partner with um, throughout the community. Um, and we'll share some of those resources. So if that is a, if you would like to make some of those connections, we, we definitely encourage that. And there is no wrong time um, to, to reach out for help, um, even for yourself as a parent. Right. Sometimes we can really benefit from the help of uh, of a mental health professional um, and certainly for for our teens as well. All right. 
So I want to make sure we have time um, to do a, a poll. Um, this is really important um, for us to collect um, some, some feedback um, from all the parents that participate. We are able to offer these parent panels for free with grant funding, but we do have to report back um, some of the feedback from our participants. So um, I wanna give you um, just a minute to complete our parent panel poll now. It's just a few questions here. And it is anonymous, so we cannot see um, who is saying what, um, but we can tell if you've done it or not. So we are going to um, give you uh, give you that time and space to answer those questions. And I'll stop talking so you can actually focus. All right, I see lots of people are, are taking our poll here. We so appreciate that. Waiting on just a, a few more of you, if you can, I'm looking for 100% participation if we can. It's really important again for our, to report back for our grants. All right. Thank you for everyone's participation. Get those last and final answers in there. And then we're going to move um, into, into some resources. All right. So I want to just um, share some resources here um, and, uh, and invite you to, to note these. We will um, follow up to, like I said, share, share some follow-up um, information with everyone that's been a part of our panel today. Um, these are some of uh, the, the top of our national resources, the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. Um, hopefully many of you are familiar with this. 988 um, is the number. We also have the Crisis Text Line. These are really important resources as parents and caregivers to have and save, um, as well as make sure that, um, that our, our teens have them in the event that there's a situation where they're really struggling or they might have a, a friend that's really struggling. And then the community regional crisis response is for those of you that are here with us in Loudoun County in the Northern Virginia area. We also have um, our Ryan Bartell Foundation programs. Um, we encourage you to check those out. Our programs center around building resilience. So this topic is, is so important to us. Um, and certainly um, if you're in the, the Northern Virginia Loudoun area, encourage you to check those out. We have um, the Fort, uh, a great event that we host on the weekends with fun experiential workshops related to yoga and movement, mindfulness, expressive arts. Um, we also have a workshop series um, and a teen hangout, our support group. Um, there's a number of resources here as well that we'll follow up to share. If you do want to learn a little bit more about resilience, um, some great information from the Child Mind Institute the American Psychological Association and Harvard Medical School. Dr. Cam Caswell um, is one of our board members and a close uh, mental health provider partner um, and has a parent education hub that is filled with all sorts of really helpful strategies and information for parents as well. Um, you can scan here if you'd like to save um, some of our information and resources. Um, so appreciate um, everyone uh, for, for um, the great conversations today. So with that, I want to just thank you all for coming. Um, here's all of our, um, you know, all of our social media handles. If you're not already following us, um, please, uh, please check us out. Um, my contact information is here. 
Um, and thanks so much. I see some great um, comments. Wanted to just sk skim through chat, make sure um, we have answered all the questions. And if you have additional questions, um, feel free to drop those into chat. We just have a few um, extra minutes and want to make sure that um, we're answering all the questions that, um, that you might have. I see a couple of people having to, to jump to another meeting. We know it's a busy, a busy um, Friday. So, so appreciate you um, being here with us today and, and taking the time. Great. Sounds like, um, sounds like this has been, this has been helpful for some. Um, I see a question up here from, from Marco asking about, um, sounds like you have a teen that's trying to cope through gaming and ask if this is recommended. Ooh, this is a really good question. Um, and you know, the answer might be um, a little a little complicated, but um, I think with technology, with um, social media and gaming, um, I think it's all about, and I think the research is suggesting it's really all about balance um, and finding that balance. So, um, you know, for some of us, right, it might be, um, you know, watching, watching a Netflix series and a little screen time might be a, a, a way that we're practicing self-care. It's when that maybe is kind of like all that we're all that we're doing, or the only coping strategy we have. Um, that that maybe that you want to help your teen explore some different and, and other strengths and coping strategies. Um, gaming can be relaxing and, and fun, and so I think it's also about having those conversations with your teen. Um, you know, kind of how are you feeling while you're doing that, and um, is you know is that something that's bringing you a lot of joy and um, and finding some finding some ways to put some limits on it too. Again, so it's not the only thing. So I don't think it's necessarily, um, you know, necessarily uh, not a not a great coping strategy. But I would, you know, invite you to to ask if there's some additional activities um, that you know that that your child might want to try or or be into. That um, if that helps you, Marco. Any other questions or comments from the from the group? All right. Um, Mira, I see a question here. Um, was there a topic before or maybe one in the future um, talking about um, an TC, T, uh, sorry, TCKS? And if you want to, I'm not sure if I'm knowing exactly the, the, um, the acronym that you're referring to. If you want to add more, or, or unmute and share. Third culture kids. Oh, great. Um, Val, I don't know if that's been um, something that we've had a panel on before um, in the in the past. Yeah, I, I was trying to think. Not. Um, yeah, it's a it's a great, great um, suggestion um, and um, definitely something that, um, you know, we would uh, would consider having providing some information about in the future. So thanks for that. Um, that suggestion, Mira. All right, thank you. Thanks for those of you. I know some of you are having to log log out here. Um, well, I just want to thank you all so much for coming um, today. Um, really, it's been uh, wonderful to to have you all. So appreciate the time, and um, and we'll uh, yeah let you let you get on with your with your day and weekend. Thank you again for for logging in, and hope that you found some useful information. All right, thank you everyone.